in episode three, the first place that Hassan ends up going is back to Ben's and explaining exactly what happened with the Pearl. The fact that he's positive that his mother is alive. What they both can't figure out is who would do something like this? Who would steal Hassan's mom and keep her captive? Ben then brings up Claire and Raul because they still think that Hassan is dead. But Hassan doesn't want to tip them off yet. Because none of this was a part of the plan. He was supposed to get the pearl, get Claire, get Raul, and get out. But he has no pearl. Which means he has to formulate some other plan before he can tip them off to the fact that he's not really dead. The phone that Hassan ended up picking up at the church then goes off with a text message. It says, Shea Tortoni at Cisco's. A kingpin in Nanterre. Bring us the painting, you've got three days. And Shea Tortoni does sound familiar, and Hassan knows exactly what it is. Because it's a famous painting by Manet that was stolen 30 years ago in Boston, which, coincidentally, there's a really good Netflix documentary about it. Anyway, now Hassan has to figure out how to infiltrate this kingpin, whose name is Cisco, infiltrate his inner circle, steal the painting in three days, and make sure his mother doesn't end up dying. Yeah, easy enough, right? In order to do that, Assange's going to need a plan, and he uses an old strategy from Lupin. He's going to get somebody to steal one of Cisco's cars, and then he is going to return it, using an alias and a shitty disguise. When this random guy shows up at Cisco's front door saying, hey, I found your car, I returned it, Cisco is a little perplexed as to who this person is. Because being a kingpin in a small area of France... He knows everybody, and he doesn't know this guy, who's claiming his name is Delange. He tells Cisco that he just got out of jail. He really wants to work for him. But Cisco has this ridiculous strategy of determining whether or not he's going to trust somebody. He pulls out a gold deck of cards, and he makes you pull an ace or you're dead. You got to figure this guy shot a ton of people. Well, luckily for Hassan, he ends up pulling that ace. And because of it, he ends up getting a job as Cisco's driver. Even after hiring him and letting him go, Cisco still doesn't really trust Hassan, and he tells one of his guys, yeah, I don't trust that guy, but we could use him. And Cisco's intuition is pretty accurate, because the first thing that Hassan does is start combing his property, looking for the painting. And after searching for a little bit, Hassan finds the painting. What he didn't expect is, the painting is in the room of an elderly woman who is hooked up to a bunch of hospice machines. And the woman is Cisco's mother. While he wasn't expecting this, Hassan handles himself like an absolute gentleman, and Cisco's mother, who isn't used to having visitors, is just happy for the company, so they start chatting it up a little bit, until Cisco's men, which includes the guy that Cisco told, yeah, I don't trust that guy, well, they show up, and they're wondering what exactly he was doing in that room. They pull him out in the hallway, they start questioning what exactly he was doing in there, And Hassan just says, I was looking for the toilet, man, and she called me in and wanted to talk. That's it. But still, Cisco's second in command, he thinks it's way too fishy. So he's going to keep an eye on Hassan. He's going to follow him. What he doesn't realize is, when Hassan did go to leave, because it was such a cramped hallway, he had to pass by the guy. And he was able to steal his cell phone. Hassan makes one call to Ben's phone, but now he needs to figure out a way to get the cell phone back to the guy. And lucky for Hassan, the guy was tailing him, and Hassan was able to pick up on it. So while Hassan is being followed, he dipped into a restaurant, dipped out the back, and paid a kid to walk up to this guy and say, here, man, you dropped your cell phone. And voila, cell phone's returned with Ben's number in the call log. While Hassan was busy throughout that day trying to infiltrate Cisco's ring, Yusef and his new friend Floor, who is the journalist, are getting acquainted and comparing notes. Yusef says, look, I will show you everything that I am working on, but you have to show me what you're working on as well so that that way we can at least partner up and catch this guy. And Floor, being a huge Lupin fan, is more than willing to work with Yusef. But that's when they get walked up on by Sophia. She's kind of curious as to why Yusef is showing all of his work to this random stranger. And that's when Floor, who's pretty quick-witted, Tell Sophia, ah, yeah, my name's Sophie, and I'm actually Yusef's girlfriend. And Yusef, who wasn't expecting that, is just forced to go along with it. But that was a move that would actually make Asan blush, because the name Sophie was the last love of Lupin. Hell, you got Yusef thinking, yeah, maybe, maybe I could, you know, be her boyfriend after that little move. 
The next day, Floor decides to go look at the source, but the source is apparently dead. So she looks at the next person in line, and that would be Claire. She introduces herself as a member of the press and says, were you aware that your husband's transgressions were linked to the Lupin books? She also asks Claire if there's any comment on the theory that Asan faked his own death, but Claire just gives her a death stare and doesn't say a word. Because to Claire, Asan is actually dead. In fact, she went and talked to Ben about it, and Ben kept the lie that Asan wanted him to, that he's still in the ground. So when a journalist came up to Claire asking about her husband, she wasn't in the mood to talk about him because she's still grieving. Her husband, though, obviously is not dead. That day, he's still working on infiltrating Cisco's ring. And planting that cell phone back on Cisco's second-in-command ends up getting him out of quite a jam because they looked up the name Sam DeLonge, that fake name that Hassan had given them, and they got nothing back. And being a kingpin, you have connections in the prisons, but no one ever heard of Sam DeLonge. Hassan tells both of them, though, that he converted to Islam in prison. They know his Muslim name. When he got out, he went back to his old name. That's why no one's ever heard of him. Cisco's second in command, though, says, dude, come on. He's been messing with you. He's a snitch. But Hassan says, no, no, no. Actually, that guy. Cisco, your second in command, he's the snitch. Check his phone. He's been working with the police. Of course, the second in command has no idea what the hell Hassan's talking about, so he hands over his cell phone. And when Cisco calls that random number, Ben picks up and pretends to be a lieutenant in the police force. It gets Hassan out of the mess that he was in, while the second-in-command is forced to pick a card. Now, luckily for the second-in-command, he pulled an ace. But he pulled an ace because Hassan wanted him to pull an ace. Hassan's never been one for blood on his hands. So as he was leaving, he snatched the gold card deck from Cisco and replaced it with one that was full of aces. He's going to have Ben place a device in the card deck that when you pull a card... It releases a gas that will knock everybody in the room out. While he hands that off to Ben, he does want to make sure that he stays close to Claire and Raul to, you know, just keep an eye on them without tipping them off to the fact that he is alive. The way he does this is creating a mask that completely changes his appearance. He goes from Asan Diop to Alex, Raul's new basketball coach. But while keeping a close eye on Raul and Claire is important, Finding out who's doing this to him is also important, and Ben's gotten on the case. He's created a board of all of the suspects, all the people that Hassan ever screwed over, and it's a long list. It's a nice start, but he's got to get back to the task at hand getting this painting. He heads over to Cisco's to find out that Cisco is planning on moving all of his stuff, including his mother, out of their current house. But he's also planning on escaping with $10 million dollars. He's going to rob an armored car, and he's leaving it up to Hassan to be a getaway driver. The plan is to grab the money, meet up with the truck that has all of Cisco's items, including the painting, and then disappear for good. So when the day comes to actually do the heist, they rob the armored car, but Hassan shows up in a bright orange car, which draws a lot of suspicion from the cops. But he did this on purpose. He specifically picked a car and told the guy to spray paint it orange. That way, when he was being chased by the cops, he could dip into a car wash and wash the paint right off. And that's exactly what he did, and they got away with it. Unfortunately, though, when they go to the meetup spot with all of Cisco's stuff and the money, Cisco turns on him. The story that Hassan told him was that this Delange fella doesn't have any family, which means that they're not going to miss him, and they don't have to give him the cut. But of course, Hassan had planned for this. He figured he couldn't trust Cisco. So Cisco once again gives him the option of pulling an ace and saving his life. But when they were getting away from the police, Hassan had slipped Cisco the altered card deck so that when he does end up pulling a card, it releases the gas and it knocks all of them out. Hassan was able to grab the painting, and then Ben called the police to tip them off from the location on the guys that robbed the armored vehicle. When Cisco wakes up, he's got a bunch of cops surrounding him with guns. Hassan is able to get away with the painting, but he also has to get to basketball practice, you know, and beat Coach Alex. While he's leaving practice with Raul and Claire, Flora comes up to Claire and once again reminds her that she really wants to talk to her about the Hassan Diop situation. It gives Hassan a really good look into what his wife is dealing with. 
He has to put it on the back burner, though, because whoever took his mom has sent him the location of where to meet with the painting. Asan, though, didn't forget about the person he stole it from. He makes sure to send Cisco's mom a copy of the painting to the hospital she's in so she can still look at it. As for the real painting, though, Asan goes and does the drop, but his mom isn't released. They do put her on the phone to let Asan know that she is okay, but while on the phone, she tells Asan, don't do anything else for them. Now that he's heard his mother's voice, he hands over the painting, but he wasn't about to let it just drive away. He had Ben put a tracking chip in it. Ben tracked the painting to the location of whoever these people are. And while Ben wanted to wait, Asan wasn't about to. He followed the painting too. He's about to walk in the front door. Thank you so much for checking out this recap. Please consider subscribing to the channel and subscribing to my Patreon. Hit thumbs up if you liked it. Smash that thumbs down button if you thought it sucked. If you left a comment, I don't get back to you. I usually don't check the comments unless they're like a super comment. Also, if you don't see the next video up on the end screen, not to worry. It'll be up in a day or two.